Hey guys, this is the Scholar General, more Jen Dimping. So today I actually wasn't going to talk about swords, but I'm going to talk about unarmed martial arts. Particularly, are they useless on the battlefield? <laughs> now in the Ming Dynasty, you have this famous general, Qi Ji Guang, who fought against these pirates in the southeastern coast called the Wokou. The Wokou bandits are pirates. And in whenever he's fighting them, after he make, has some victories, he writes this book in 1560 called the Ji Xiao Xin Shu, or like the New Treatise on Military Efficiency. And in that book, one of the chapters is called the Quan Jing Ji Yao Pian, or Essentials of the Fist and Needs of Nimbleness, basically. And <laughs> he starts out that chapter by saying, um, unarmed martial arts are don't really have any relation to techniques that you use on the battlefield but it's good to you know practice strengthening your limbs and you know that's how you enter the martial arts is by studying unarmed martial arts this sounds like he's kind of saying that you know these unarmed martial arts are fairly useless on the in war and peter lorge a military historian goes even further and he says that because qi ji guang in his first he in his first edition of the Ji Xiao Xin Shu in fifteen sixty, he has this chapter about the fist methods, but later on in other training manuals and also in his second edition of the Ji Xiao Xin Shu, he actually completely omits fist methods. So that kind of suggests that what he originally put in there is really being not necessary to train troops. The later version of the Ji Xiao Xin Shu is basically all about lances and firearms, so <laughs> those are the real weapons of war that you really need to focus on. You don't need to mess around with your hands is kind of the impression that one might get. Is this correct? I mean, if we look at uh, Europe and Japan, we can see that knights would train in wrestling and uh, samurai would have training like jujitsu and they know all these joint lock techniques and all that stuff. But what about in China? And, you know... Is it necessary to train in those things? So you might think that uh, Qi Ji Guang's you know, chapter on the fist essentials or the Quan Jing Ji Yao Pian is basically just about striking because it's fists, right? It says essentials of the fist. And striking is generally considered to be fairly useless in the battle because you're not going to punch someone through armor and especially not if you have a weapon in your hand. The striking is all about the weapon. It's not about, you know, using your fist to strike and kick and stuff. The problem with that, though, is that actually the Quan Jing Ji Yao Pian contains grappling techniques. One of the techniques that I'll go into now is the Xia Cha Shi, or the lower entering stance. And if we take a close look at that, we can see that it's basically a single leg takedown. All right, so we're going to take a look at what's called the Xia Cha Shi, or the lower entering stance from Qi Ji Guang's, like, Essentials of the Fist chapter of the Ji Xiao Xin Shu. Now, in the picture that it shows, is kind of something like this. But you might think, like, what the heck is this? <laughs> like, it looks kind of funny. But what it actually is, is it's a single leg takedown. The first line that it says in Chinese is, Guan Jiang Kuai, Tui De Jin Bu, which means you have to drop quickly and enter with your feet. Your feet must enter, so you drop in like this, right? And then the next line says, uh, which means you have to, whenever you're down here, you want to lean in and you want to mix and not separate. So you don't want to have a lot of distance. The next part says, whenever I'm here and I'm leaning in, it says, So I hook, my, I hook over the leg and I lock my arm. So it's not easy for him to leave or make great distance, so he can't get away, basically. Now the last part, after that, it says, Shang Jing Xia Chu which basically means, so once I'm here and I poke the leg, I explode forward above and I pull below. And if I do that, it's pretty obvious I can put him down. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want my trusty assistant to get wet on the nasty ground. But the basic idea is I'm here and I drop down and I go right here like this. So we'll do that one more time. I'm here and I drop down and I push. So, and that is the Xia Cha Shi. So that shows one of the 
one grappling technique. It's the ninth technique in Ti Ji Guang's Chuan Jing Ji Ya Pian, or the Essentials of the Fist chapter. So now that we've taken a closer look at the Xia Cha Shi, we can see that Ti Ji Guang definitely wrote about grappling techniques in the Essentials of the Fist chapter of the Ji Xiao Xin Shu. But he still kind of thought that these weren't useful. Whereas in Europe and Japan, you know, these things were viewed as useful for the elite warriors. Now, why might that be? Uh, there's a few reasons why I think this makes sense for Chi Ji Guang to say. Number one is that his book about essentials of the fist is not, it has some grappling in it, but that grappling is not grappling with a weapon. So in Chinese martial arts with like the Tao and uh, there's a lot of grappling techniques contained within using the weapon, but that's not considered the grappling that Chi Ji Guang is talking about here. So if you include Tao, the Tao fighting as a f having grappling techniques, then all of a sudden you do have grappling techniques at play. It's just not ones without any weapon. So that, that you know, on the battlefield, if you have a weapon, you need to learn to grapple with your weapon. You don't need to learn to grapple without a weapon. It's just not as important. Another thing is that Chi Ji Guang is writing his manual to sh tell generals how to train, you know, peasants basically in warfare in big formations and stuff. And it's not it's not something like the samurai or the knights where you take this elite <laughs> warrior and the grappling is kind of like yeah well if you know, the worst comes to worst, you can be able to f grapple and wrestle something out of their hands or something. But that's like icing on the cake of all the things you need to know to go to war. Like the basic things you need to know in Chi Ji Guang's time are, you know, how to shoot and how to use a, how to use a lance. So you focus on <laughs> the most important things first and then you get to the fancier stuff later. And uh, if we look at elite warriors in China, um, it varies across different dynasties, and it's a really complicated topic that I might talk about in another video. But we know that wrestling was definitely a component of things that, like, mounted warriors, like uh, mounted archers would study, like, uh, especially on the steppe. So a lot of elite units in Chinese armies resembled steppe units, like the Mongols and other enemies that they fought. And wrestling is a huge part of step culture and you know they definitely these elite troops and Chinese armies definitely knew how to wrestle but it was never meant to be any kind of like main thing the main thing was always archery or you know crossbow archery or using a firearm it's always about range weapons range weapons and then spears and then you start to get to that elite stuff or the more refined harder to pull off stuff wrestling is never the most important thing and you know, learning how to shoot a bow or a crossbow or a gun is always considered more important at every stage in Chinese history <laughs> compared to any other martial art, basically, for the elites and for the conscripts. So that's kind of a reason why, in that context, where Chi Ji Guang's taking these peasants who have very little armor and he's just like, you know, we're just going to learn how to use firearms and spears. And we don't need to learn, we don't need to mess with that unarmed stuff because you're never going to really have a chance to pull it off anyway. That's kind of why he says that and why he, I would say, is still correct in saying that unarmed martial arts are not the techniques that you use in battle. All right, so that wraps it up for this video. Uh, you know, please subscribe and stay sharp.